you little monsters, this little monster girl Desi coming at ya. And today I'll be designing the Ed's World boys as magical boys. While also talking about my thought process behind it. Though odds are I'm just going to end up rambling a lot, so try and bear with me. So to start off, let me ask you this. What is a magical girl anime? Well, the very basic idea is exactly as it sounds. It's literally about a magical girl or a group of girls fighting evil. And of course, each team has a theme. Though I have watched one or two where it's kind of all over the place. And the two I'm talking about are extremely dark. And before you ask, no, I don't mean Madoka Magica. But if you thought I meant Magical Girl Sight, then you're on point. And maybe I'll draw the boys in that universe sometime. But today I'll be drawing them in Tokyo Mew Mewverse. And like a lot of kids my age, well, adults actually, one of my first animes was Sailor Moon. This was also the first case of what I like to call White Knight Syndrome. Now in Sailor Moon, if you watch the anime, you'll definitely know about Tuxedo Mask. And guys like him are a pretty common trope in a lot of other, other magical girl animes. In Tokyo Mew Mew, they literally have the Blue Knight. And if you've ever watched any season of Pretty Cure, there's probably one in there too. Basically, the White Knight is pretty much meant to be the boy version of a magical girl. Or at least that's how I interpret it through junior high when I was really into Pretty Cure. Though, while researching this video, I did notice that instead of being a boy version of the magical girl trope, the White Knights are pretty much what you would expect a White Knight to be, at least in storybook form. He is meant to be that the girl... <laughs> He's meant to be the guy the girls like. He's meant to swoop in whenever they need him most, but then once he gives his two cents, they kind of take care of it for him afterwards. I'm not saying this is bad. Honestly, it's a pretty good trope in, well, little girls shows, since more often than not, little girls will think of a white knight. And I'm talking about the majority, not the minority. In other cases like Shugo Chara, the guys will actually be a lot more involved in the battles. But then you have the whole Tokyo Mew Mew but with boys this time thing. And I honestly did not like it. And I'm not going to say that it's just because of the style that this comic was written in, drawn in, but you can overall tell that this is a comic written directly for girls. From the guys' outfit designs to the way they behave. Not really a bad thing, but when I heard that it was going to be Tokyo Mew Mew but with boys this time, I cannot even try to pronounce the actual name of it, I was kind of hoping for a little more. And because of all the different white knight tropes that I've seen in, well, all the animes I've mentioned except to Gochara, I almost opted to just draw the Ed's World boys into Ed's World girls with the whole Tokyo Mimi vibe. Since I couldn't find any anything good to reference. But then I remembered a piece of fan art from a really long time ago. I'll put it up on the screen, but when I was really deep into Tokyo Mimi fandom, this artist who isn't really active on DeviantArt anymore to my knowledge drew a whole what-if scenario. And if I had to guess, I probably subconsciously thought back to this art piece when trying to read the whole Tokyo Mew Mew revive thing. By the way, they did revive that comic, sort of, and I love it. Though I really hate the changes to the outfits. I'm sorry, I'm just being nitpicky. So in the speed paint, I'll be referencing that art piece instead of referencing much of anything else, and I'm sorry about all the salt. Alright, so now I'll talk about my thought process. Firstly, I'm going off of show canon rather than manga canon for Tokyo Mew Mew. Since this was definitely my favorite magical girl anime next to Pretty Cure, and obviously the one that I was most obsessed with, this was at the top of my list of choices. The difference between show canon and manga canon is that in Tokyo Mew Mew manga, 
they pretty much use the same shades of blues and reds and purples and yellows and greens for the characters' out eye colors, hair, and outfits. While in the show, they definitely do use a bit more of a variety. Not a big difference, but still a difference. Obviously, there's one main color and then there's accent colors. As well as simplifying the animal parts to look more cutesy. So that's obviously what I tried to do for the boys. As an older artist, I can definitely appreciate the different silhouettes that each character has. So I tried my best to also apply that to the boys. While keeping a few things obviously the same, just in a slightly different style that would look more natural on a guy. Or at least that's what I was going for. Now, on to character designs. I made sure to both reference the fan art piece as well as show canon to make sure that I got the outfits right. I definitely wanted it to look Tokyo Mew Mew-esque, but I didn't want to completely cheat and just use somebody else's reference. So unlike Tokyo Mew Mew, the boys don't have the little arm poofs or a garter belt. And I also gave them a studded choker while their original fan art piece just had smooth chokers. In most Magical Girl animes, they have a little thing to help them transform and it usually becomes part of the outfit. But moving on a bit, I made sure to choose an endangered animal for each of the boys. For Matt, I over... For Matt, I over... For Matt, I obviously chose a bat. For him, I chose the endangered cotton ball micro bat. That was a bit of a mouthful. When I searched up endangered bats, I absolutely fell in love with this little cotton ball. And thought it suited him pretty well. And while I definitely could have gone with an endangered species of deer, I can't really get over the whole vampire thing. Also, none of the Tokyo Mew Mew outfits have sleeves. So while I wanted to give Matt his usual overcoat, I kind of had to turn it into a vest, but I still think it looks pretty good on him. And since the microbat has yellow in its ears, I made sure to give his wings those that same yellow accent color. And although I kind of threw together that, pur that shade of purple and yellow together, I'm glad that it still worked out. I was kind of worried that they would clash. And since Show Cannon gives me a bit more liberty with the coloring, instead of the giving the boys neon colored hair, I made sure that the tones were different from parts of the outfit and not the exact same color as the eyes either. But I also had to remember that whatever colors I used, I kept using to accent each part, that way everything would stay tied together. That was a bit tricky since I'm not used to using, like, one color for an outfit. Granted, they were different shades, but still. Since Matt is a little vain, I made sure to give him a simplified outfit that still looked pretty good. I didn't want him to look too punk, though, which is a bit hard since he has studded belts pretty much all over. And to resist the urge of giving him purple mascara, I painted his nails purple instead. Since all the boys either have gloves or wristbands, I thought that would be a cute thing for him to have. Though my favorite thing has to be the boots I gave him. I don't know why, I just think that tall boots look really good on Matt. And overall, I think he looks really good. Though looking back on it, I kind of wish I changed his hairstyle just a little bit. But what do you guys think? And up next is Ed. For our pun-loving boy, I gave him the Clouded Leopard. As since in Tokyo Mew Mew Ichigo, the main character, er, leader, is the Aramelte Wildcat, but her design was just simplified to have black cat ears and a tail, I'd figured I'd do the same. When looking at pictures of the, the Clouded Leopard, I noticed that it was mostly brown. So that made me remember the episode of Power Ed where there's that little scene where Ed and the rest of them are little kitty cats. So I used the brown tabby fur from that scene since I thought it would also be a cute reference to his tabby cat Ringo. But while choosing the colors for him, I was a little hesitant to 
use different shades of green. Even though it's my favorite color, I do have a bit of trouble making sure to get the right shades to pair with other colors, which is why I don't really use it much other than the neon green. But luckily the cargo pa pa pants Ed wears are a bit of a green yellow color. So that was definitely a lifesaver. And it didn't end up clashing too bad with the brownish red fur I gave him. I also changed I also changed Ed's hairstyle a little bit to make him look a bit younger. Since I originally planned for them all to be teenagers, but Ed is pretty much the only one I remembered to change the hairstyle for. Well, other than Tord, but we'll get back to that. If you're also wondering why Ed is the only one with a hoodie, it's because, for me at least, Ed is the one with a hoodie. Yes, it's the signature for all of his friends, but to me, it's Ed's thing. And while I'm still kicking myself for accidentally putting his little leg band on the wrong side, I actually wanted to mirror Ed to Ichigo's design a little bit. In Tokyo Mimi, Ichigo has a little ribbon on her wrist which she uses to connect her weapon to kind of power it up. So I made sure to give Ed a little wristband on one of his arms to kind of reference that. And you'll see in a later pic of what their weapons are. Also, while thinking up these designs, I almost gave Ed a tail piercing. Because I kind of remembered an old manga I used to read where it was Owlless in Wonderland and the Cheshire Cat had a piercing on his tail. But I thought that would be a little bit too punk, so instead I gave him a little belt on his tail with a bell hanging from it. Which I think still looks pretty good. Don't know how it stays on, but well, I tried. Also, out of all of them, Ed's pose was the most fun I had with. In a lot of cat poses, you see people just curling their hands and bringing it up under their chin and everything. But I originally thought that that was too cutesy, so... I went for a more typical pose where somebody goes, Rawr. That's pretty much the best way I can describe that pose. Though it gave me a bit of a problem since it always... It also looks like kind of a bear pose, which gave me a bit of problems when I came to do Tom. But luckily, Ed still looks pretty good. And hopefully you guys think so too. And now on to Tom. For Tom, I had a little bit more trouble trying to pick the animal. If you follow me on the Ed's World Amino, you know that I put up a poll to try and decide what animal him and Tord would be. Originally, one of my ideas was to have him a type of raccoon or a red panda. But I shouldn't be surprised that his most voted was polar bear. So in the end, I went with a polar bear. Which I think is probably for the best since the white gray fur of the polar bear definitely fits better with the blue. I can't even imagine how hard it would have been to try and incorporate the red panda fur. And in my opinion, Tom kind of ended up being the cutest one out of all of them. I've definitely noticed that in a lot of magical girl animes, whenever there's a varying in ages and sizes, usually the smallest one will end up with shorts or the cutest outfit, I guess. So I ended up slapping those on to Tom. <laughs> Which I kind of feel bad for considering like, even though Tom is a jokester, and can be a little bit childish in the older episodes, he definitely comes off as the grumpier one. If anything, I can imagine that in this world, he probably complains a lot about his power form. I also had to stop myself from giving him checkered wristbands. Also, his pose was the hardest next to looking up Matt's. So trying to incorporate an outfit to kind of fit his personality was pretty tricky. So in this world, and kind of IRL, Tom is probably the youngest of the group, so making him the shortest and probably adding to his annoyance a bit. 
I've worked with the color blue quite a bit, so it wasn't as hard to get the blue and the white to match. So other than the pose and the outfit, Tom's design was definitely a lot easier. But I also had to reference Gimson off of Instagram just to make sure I was getting him right. I'm not really used to drawing Tom cute. Added to that, kind of a last second thought, but I probably should have made Tom's skin a lot darker to kind of contrast the light blues and the, well, the white animal ears. Maybe something to touch upon next time. But since bears are swimmers, I kind of tried to make his shorts sort of look like swim trunks. And Tom kind of seems like the type to leave that loose part of the belt kind of, well, unhipped. Hooked. So hopefully that looks okay. But yeah, other than that, not much to say. I am not good at this. And finally, we have everybody's favorite little red gremlin, Tord. And like I said, I put up a poll and people voted for Tord to be a fox. No surprise there, but I was kind of hoping that you guys would divert my expectations. Not mad. But either way, out of all of them, I can definitely say Tord was the absolute easiest. I knew from the very start I wanted to give Tord sort of an army pose and to give him an army-esque look, complete with slightly puffy pants tucked into combat boots. And of course being the cringy teen I was, I have plenty of experience of using lots of reds. Although I was partially tempted to kind of use uh, yellow fox fur instead of red fox fur, but Oh, it still ended up being Red Fox. Looking at it now, it probably would have looked a lot better to use a more yellowish fur color to kind of break up the whole thing. Since instead of looking like an orangey red next to all the other red, it just looks red. But putting that aside and small mistakes that I will maybe fix another day, I overall really enjoyed giving Tord the little gloves, and I really loved how the combat boots turned out. I half wanted to give Tord a studded belt like Ed, but I thought that a smoother belt like Matt suited him better. And referencing a few pics of Tord as a werewolf, instead of giving him his little hair horns on top of the ears, Probably in this world, he has his hair up in the horns, but when he transforms, his little fox ears take their place. So I guess that's kind of changing his hairstyle. Again, another thing I wish I had touched more upon, but something to maybe fix at a later date. I'm gonna be honest, I actually got a little bit dizzy looking at all the red shades. And it was surprisingly hard to get the right shade of red without making it look annoyingly bright. I know I just said that I had a lot of experiences with bright reds, but it still kind of gets to you after a while. Putting that aside in this world, bringing that up once again, which I probably should have done for the other boys too, Tord was probably the most excited out of all of them to get a superhero form being the weeb trash he is. So odds are he was probably jealous of Ed, probably wanting to be both the leader and the one with the cat mentality. Men mentality? What? Why can I not get words right today? But anyways, putting all that aside, there we go. I can honestly say I really love these designs and they're a pretty good thing. And they're a pretty good set for my first try at Magical Girl stuff in a long time. Looking at, back at this all while recording, I did miss a few things like the placement of the seams and all that. And also forgetting that stuff like white accents is a thing, so I could have definitely used that with Tom and Tord. I actually worked on all of these drawings like over the past few days, 
just to make sure I didn't overwork myself and end up making a lot of mistakes because I was too tired to notice them. But with all that said, it was a lot of fun to bring together two genres I really love and maybe they'll inspire some future speed paints. Who knows? Oof, that was a long one. It's been a while since I've recorded this long and I definitely want to do more stuff like this. You know, videos about the whole creative process. Obviously, I'm still pretty new to putting my creative process into words, but I have been asked a lot how I do certain things and I thought it would definitely be helpful to other artists if I tried making more videos like this one. I still like doing story times and all that, so yeah, a new thing to add to my roster. Going back and researching Magical Girl stuff was definitely a lot of fun, a bit nostalgic, but when trying to watch Tokyo Mew Mew for the first time in a long time, it honestly nearly killed me. I don't know why I just cannot get over the animation style, so I just opted to reread the whole comic. And one thing I didn't touch upon while drawing the first versions of the boys before drawing this poster you're seeing was that I actually debated on whether or not I should add a fifth member. Now the obvious choices are obviously Paul, uh, Laurel, and maybe Pat. So maybe in another speed paint I'll give them power forms. Because another thing really popular in Magical Girl animes is bringing on the fifth, or well, sort of in most cases, uh, the sixth or seventh member. In some cases, the added member who is uh, supposed to be more overpowered than the rest of them is either brought in when the leader is not able to help or like they just need an extra boost because the enemy is getting stronger and they can't defeat them without them. In Tokyo Mimi's case it's Barry but it's a lot more common if you pretty much watch every season of Pretty Cure. Another thing I didn't get a chance to touch upon because I didn't originally draw them, were pretty much all the weapons I gave the boys. Now again, Tom and Tord were kind of obvious. Tord gets guns, Tom gets the harpoon. But I had a bit more trouble with Ed and Matt. Kinda got swapped around since Tom and Tord were the hardest to pick an animal for and Ed and Matt were the easiest. But anyways, I remembered a cute fan animation where Tor I mean Ed used his lucky can as a weapon during uh, I can't think of the name for it. I'll put it up on the screen again. So I thought to kind of change that into a green chain with a golden bell shaped like a cat at the end. I know that in Tokyo Mew Mew a few of them got instruments and like, the other two got weapons kind of associated with their animals. I don't really know. I know Reagan and Emery too kind of called uh, Zakuro's weapon a whip, but to me it always looked more like a, a gymnastics ribbon. I think that's what it's called. So yeah, trying my best here. While Ichigo kind of had her overpowered weapon that helped turn the animals that were infected by the parasite back into regular animals. I don't really know how Ed's weapon would work with that and all, but I don't know, I'll figure it out later. <laughs> and of course I thought that Matt would probably use a long range weapon, though I was sort of tempted to give him a mirror but I decided to make things difficult on myself and give him a bow and arrow. Which Mew Mew Mint has, but at first her weapon just kind of looks like a toy and Matt's just... I don't know. Another thing is, is in Tokyo Mew Mew they've got the whole heart thing going on. Oh, so I decided to opt for stars. They still look 
pretty cutesy and make things sort of look like toys and all, but again, I'm trying my best here. Oh, and before I forget, I also added Ringo because I forgot to draw her in the first place. All Magical Girl animes pretty much have some kind of mascot, so I turned Ringo into a floating little furball with tiny little bat wings. Doesn't she look cute? She just kind of flies around and alerts them whenever there's danger and when they need to transform and all that and also gives them the power-ups once the enemy gets too strong. You know, typical mascot stuff. Though in this world, I think she would transform to look like a normal cat, which is a lot better than the little keychain in the original series. That being said, I don't have anything against the whole Tokyo Mew Mew, but with boys thing, I just I'm just overall kind of disappointed with their outfits. They all look like they're from a J-pop band rather than superheroes trying to fight for the earth and all that. The outfits aren't really bad in any way. I don't know, they're just not my taste. But if you like it, then you do you. And as much as I keep griping about it being a bit of a headache to try and find good references, I definitely want to try and do more of these in the future. Like just fun little AUs and concepts that kind of get the whole creative process going whenever I'm stuck. So if you guys have any suggestions or have any animes I haven't maybe heard of and you want me to see, leave them down in a comment below. I'm always looking for more material to watch because I keep running out of shows that need to hurry up and update. Urgh, God. Not mad, my throat's just hurting and it's making me irritated. Um, also, I, I've added a few perks to my Patreon if you guys want to go and check that out. For $2 a month, you get everything I post. And for $15 a month, you help support me even more, and you also get an, yeah, an icon for your first month. And you also get your name featured at the end of each video, too. But if you guys can't commission me or support me on Patreon, you can also support me on Tapas. On Tapas, you can collect ink and even send it in for commissions. Or you can just check out more of my content. Either way, I'm always happy to see your guys' support. Especially since, as I'm working on this video, this channel finally managed to reach 2,000 plus subscribers. And oh my god, I still can't believe that I've made it this far. So if you want to help support me and further my art career and the things that I managed to explore, I have links to my social media down in the description. And you can also subscribe to my channel and press the bell for notifications. The Little Monster community is always looking for new members. And while I've said before that I never thought that I could really get supported on YouTube, I'm still really happy to put out content for everybody. I'm still pretty confident that I won't be able to use YouTube as a job. But seeing comments on my videos and knowing that people are enjoying the content I put out definitely makes all the work worth it. Even if whenever I put out one of my ship videos, I sometimes get the whole not my ship comment. At this point, I find them more funny than annoying. And maybe if you guys are interested and you've listened this far, I'll put up another poll for more Magical Girl content or just more random AU content featuring either my dear fellow Traveler characters or the Ed's World boys. Depending how well this video is going to be received, I'll definitely make a note of to try and do more stuff like this in the future. And with all that said, watch out for the monsters under the bed and I'll see all you jelly beans in the next video. Bye!